and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. This will be my review of the Legio Custodes Gerfalcon Pattern Jet Bike. Specifically the Squadron, the Agamatus Squadron. Three is the minimum that you can have in the Squadron. Um, you can't just have one flying about. And the Squadron can include an extra three. So the maximum in, in your Squadron is obviously six. The rules for the Agamartus Jet Bike Squadron can be found in Inferno, Book 7, Horus Heresy. I'll talk about the rules uh, towards the end of the video. But first what I'd like to do is just talk about the miniatures themselves. So this set of three is £90. Um, you can buy them individually for £33. If the minimum number uh, for a squadron is three, you're always best buying the, the three for the £90. Although if you haven't got that kind of money up front and um, you can always buy them in individually over like a few months or, or something like that so there is that option you can also buy them in a squad of six for the 180 pounds i'm still on the fence whether to to have a squad of six and then a squad of three i think a squad of six would uh would look pretty awesome um and i think nine might overpower the the whole uh, force I was very impressed with the unboxing, uh, with the boxes that they came in, that they were checked, um, that you got those little compartment tray boxes that you can store extra parts in and things. Also, I was impressed with the uh, instruction manual, how to build them. Uh, lovely CAD designed uh, instruction book. Uh, really excellent detail and um, really does what uh, what one of these guides uh, should should do. Building them was an absolute joy. I had no issues whatsoever. The only issues you might have is if any of your power lances are bent somewhat, and also the uh, plumes, <laughs> I've been told, might have some gaps in towards the back of them, um, just the way the resin forms onto the, the helmet. Um, it isn't as sort of smooth as the plastic, and obviously the plastic, um, custodies uh, when you glue the plume to the helmet on them they sort of melt and bond anyway um, whereas resin a lot of the time there is a there is a gap uh, or that gap is um, plugged up with either super glue or you know putty or, or green stuff I have the parts here uh, these are all the spare parts as you can see I've gone for this configuration um, I might have all Adrathic Devastator weapons um, on the on the next batch but uh, I've gone for two Adrathic Devastators and one twin linked uh, LAS pulse. so I'll talk about the rules for that in a moment um, but it does come with the bolt cannons I thought I'd overlooked the rules for the um, bolt cannons but in the data sheet for the uh, jet bike it says that they're all equipped with Iliastus bolt cannons I couldn't find Iliastus bolt cannons I could only find the Lastrum bolt cannons which is what I'm thinking they mean um, because there's an Iliastus uh, accelerator cannon but I couldn't find the, the bolt cannon so there are all the spare parts you've got some arms there as well um, you can have them all sort of holding up onto the handlebars with uh, with both arms if you wish but because the spear has the hand already on there you, I mean you could uh, have them holding onto the bars and then have the spear glued to the side of the jet bike but then you'd, you're going to have to cut that hand off and modify it and um, somehow or just glue the the handle to the the haft of the the spear because they're custodians they are actually very compatible with all of the um spare parts and that's given me an idea to do if i do nine then i think then i think three of them i'll have uh swords or even spears uh, the guardian spears maybe even a shield and a, and a sword sort of um no handed on the jet bike i i don't know but it definitely um gives you plenty of options uh, for modification and things because they're compatible with those um, let's look at the miniatures themselves then firstly they're huge um, I'll quickly do a size comparison and then I'll look at each one individually so compared to a space marine there's a normal space marine as you can see it absolutely sort of dwarfs a space marine they're very long very very long actually longer than a rhino um, if I just put a rhino here uh, look at that so longer than a rhino and I, I didn't think that they'd be this this big this this long but uh, there you go so it is it is definitely longer they have a lot of presence I mean just from me showing you without these two models um, there um, you wouldn't have thought that they were actually this big but they're they're quite large for sort of 30 pounds each I'd say 
And then compared to a custodian guard, I have to say that the size is very similar, if not exact, um, with the models, which is what you'd sort of expect. So there's custodian guard next to um, next to the jet bike. You could actually just build a jet bike without the custodian guard on it, um, have it either crashed or have it just on its base, and then maybe you could have a custodian guard holding that um, power lance. That's an option too. And then next to a Contemptor, Dreadnought still has more presence than a Contemptor. So it's definitely up there with one of the, the biggest uh, units now um, that, that the Custodian Guard have. And it looked great next to like a two or three um, Palace Grav Tanks. So there you go. That's a bit of a size comparison. Now let's have a look at the models individually. So this guy I've sort of made as the sort of shield captain, um, even though there isn't really a... A command structure within the jet bike squadron there's no sort of sergeant or shield captain as, as, as i mentioned um i've modeled him with his power lance raised like he's probably doing that maybe um and also i've super glued a power knife on there just to give him a harder hit in uh, close combat even though you can't equip him with that in in game terms it just looks like he's got that secondary blade there um the detail is fantastic, uh, absolute joy to, to build. You could easily knock these out um, within within an afternoon after you've washed them and things. Um, so speed-wise, if you bought sort of six, you could do them in a day, I'd say. Mold lines weren't too many, still just a few mold lines there, slippage. Um, but the Custodian Guard, there's nothing on there. Uh, the spear, which I thought there'd be a long one there or something. No, you might have some issues on the tip. I've got like a little bit of cleaning up to do there, but not really any issues with the, the jet bike itself. Um, just this model, there's a bit of slippage inside there, but the rest are fine. Um, nothing on the guns, guns were excellent. So that's sort of my detailed look at um, how easy that difficult they sort of were. They weren't, they were very easy to sort of make. I will say that these bases are pants though, um, just, just the height of them really, more than anything. Um, I'd much rather have longer stalks uh, for, the, for the bases because as you can see these are really low. Um, then this uh, custodian guard, uh, I've done him with his spear sort of, I say resting on the jet bike um, and he's looking to the left so he's obviously seen that his uh, captain or sergeant or whoever it's altering direction and he's gonna follow him and that's obviously the weight of it or whatnot has just um, gone against the jet bike. So there you go. That's the uh, twin linked Las Pulsar. And then this is the Adrathic Devastator. Uh, I'll talk about the rules in, in a moment. But uh, so yeah, so that's, that's that one. And then this final one, he's sort of looking down at an enemy, probably about to stab that power lance through them. Um, so quite a standard sort of pose. I would like to have one or two holding the uh, handlebars if I can work out how to incorporate this power lance uh, on it without it looking like I've just super glued him on. Um, but there you go. So yeah, absolute beast of a weapon. Really nicely detailed models and a great sign of things to come if they, if and when they do create the Custodian Guard Terminators and the Hateron squads and the, uh, the Heavy Dreadnought too. So that's my look at these uh, the models individually. Um, now I'll talk about the rules. So, firstly, they're all equipped with power lances. I didn't know what the hell power lances were. They're not in book seven. They're not in the uh, Age of Darkness army list book. Um, I had to go back to the Warhammer 40K rules. So this little uh, Death Watch version of them. And in there, they're under melee weapons, under a type of power weapon. Power lance has two profiles for both strength and arm penetration. Um, the first is used in which the model charges, and the second is used all of the times. So when these charge, they get plus one strength, and their AP is three. That's pretty decent. That's really efficient at wiping out Space Marines in close combat. I'll just go through their stat line to sort of back that up. So their weapon skill, ballistic skill, and strength are all five. Toughness is six now. Uh, they've got two wounds, initiative four. They've got two attacks, leadership nine, and save of two plus. So charging, they'd have the three attacks against sort of like Legion Space Marines. The only downside is that they're going to be attacking at the same time, which is I would have liked to have seen them be initiative five, like their 
you know, custodian guard on, on foot counterparts. But still, that would have made them immense. Uh, so yeah, so say they're getting three attacks each. Um, so that's your, that's your nine attacks. Three's up to, to hit. And then their strength is plus one. So they're now hit, they're now wounding on a, on a two plus because the strength goes from five to six on that first round. And with AP three, they're knocking everything out. So pretty much you could say almost half of your, your, um, you know, 20 man squad is, is gone just from the first round. Um, However, they're not going to fare very, very well in the, the second round. So in a squad of six, they've got a good chance at wiping out a, a Legion squad um, or definitely whittling it down uh, an awful lot. But then in the second round of combat, they're going to be a bit unstuck uh, because their strength is now the user. So it's threes to wound, um, but their AP now goes uh, up, which is bad, um, to four. So they're they're not going to be, I say, you know, instant killing um, space marines anymore. So they might be bogged down both by initiative and the number of attacks. And remember, all those um, legion marines will get their attacks back, and you might have one or two in the squad that have a, a power weapon or two. So their main strength is with that frontal um, potent heavy weapon, uh, which I'll talk about. So they come with the. They say Iliastus bolt cannon, but um, I couldn't find that. Like I said, uh, I could only find the Lastrum bolt cannon. And that bolt cannon is uh, range 36 inches, strength 6, AP 3, heavy 3, heliothemic detonation. Um, so that's it's pretty awesome because obviously they can move their um, 12 inches. Um, so they've got an effective range of 48 inches, which means, you know, from on a normal size board, they're going to be in range of, of anything pretty much. Um, each one would be three shots and the heliothermic detonation if target suffers unsafe wound they might need to make a toughness test and if they fail they suffer instant death um, furthermore on penetration uh, you add plus one to the vehicle damage table um, that's if you can penetrate so if you're flanking sort of dreadnoughts at the rear or predators or rhinos then that's great but you wouldn't really put these up against um land raiders and things unless they have the adrathic devastators um, which obviously two of mine do have um, their range is 18 inches so you've got an effective range of 30 inches there their strength is six the ap is two so that's now they can go after the heavily armed targets it's heavy two shot instant death armor bane but it is gets hot so that's that's what you you're sacrificing here i'd have two shots hitting on twos um, you're getting up to a good chance of getting a one with that with those gets hot, and you can't obviously re-roll your your shots. But that's the trade-off you get for the instant death and the armor bane. So armor bane with strength six is pretty pretty decent actually. And yeah, they can go after land raiders and things like that. So they have the normal custodian armor, which gives them the two plus, and they have the refractor fields, which is five plus and vulnerable. You can have three more in that uh, squadron. They can all be given melter bombs, which again gives them more of a punch in combat against, say, if if a dreadnought grabs them uh, and tar pits them, or if uh, if they assault a vehicle and they want to get rid of it um, a bit quicker than than usual, uh, or if they just want to assault um, a fortification or something. So then you have to pay for the different weapon options. Now it's five points for the Adrathic Devastator, which is very cheap. Um, but it's 25 points for the twin-linked Corvée Laz Pulsar. Now the Corvée Laz Pulsar is 36 inches, um, its strength is 9, AP2, heavy D3. So again, like the uh, bolt cannon, effective range of 48 inches, um, but there's that random element. Instead of three shots for definite, it, they're going to have to roll a D3. And yeah, I mean, you've got a higher chance of getting two or more um, shots with them, statistically. It's basically an up to three shot, 36 inch range last cannon. So the same as what's on the uh, the uh, the Achilles Dreadnought. I'll also give you the, the special rule. So they've got their preternatural skill, sodality, inviolable psyche, deep strike, split fire, and sweeping fire. Uh, the Go Falcon jet bike, uh, that operates uh, using the standard rules for jet bikes found in 40k rulebook. Uh, and increases rider's toughness for one, which has already been included. That's why it's toughness six. 
and also fail charge distances may be re-rolled. So there are all the special rules and, and things uh, for them. I'll just compare them out of interest. I know, th I know this is a long video, but I'll just compare them out of interest to your standard jet bikes, which I think uh, for the Space Marine Legion standard jet bikes, I think it's £76 for three compared to these 90 uh, Because I like these so much, I'm really, really tempted to get the, uh, the Legion ones. I'll also say for three of them, uh, just armed with the bolt cannons, it's 225 points. Um, my squad there is 260 points um, with those upgrades, which is quite a lot really for, for, for three jet bikes. Quite pricey. So like the Agamatis jet bike squadron, the Legion jet bike Sky Hunter squadron, um, minimum unit of three, but you can have seven, seven additional jet bikes, so you can have ten in a, in a squadron. Um, they're cheaper in, in real money, and they're cheaper in points, 135 points, um, but their stat line they have one less of everything, including the toughness, one less wound, they have the same initiative, they have one less attack, they have a one less leadership, but they have the same two plus save, and they have a hunter sergeant, which can be given a, a power fist or, or power weapon or lightning claw, and they all have frag and crack grenades, they have the deep strike rule. Um, now those jet bikes all have heavy bolters, but for every three, one, can replace the heavy bolter with one of the following. So unfortunately there's a bit of a tax you have to pay there. Because if, if you have six, then you could have two Volkite Culverins or two Plasma Cannons or two Multi Melters. Um, but the rest are going to be heavy bolters. So although it's cheaper in points and the stat line is, I say, worse, um, and they have less wounds and, and less attacks, things like that, um, their save is still two plus and they still have a nice toughness five. However, they don't have anything in close combat. They just have a chainsword or, or you know, the combat blades. So normal com close combat attacks. Um, so they're lacking that punch when they first initially get into combat. And they're mainly for zipping about having the effective 48 inch range for the um, plasma cannon and the, um, the heavy bolters. So they're mainly an anti sort of troop and anti sort of soft troop uh, unit whereby these guys, um, you can equip them all with the, the LAS pulsers um, for, for that hefty 75 points uh, increase. So you're now looking at 300 points for the, um, for the squadron. And that's like 100 points each, um, each model uh, for two wounds. Um, but for that, you're getting a potential nine LAS cannon shots um, with no, uh, you know, gets hot or anything like that. Or you could have six... Um, instant death armor bane shots um, with the Adrathic Devastators. Or you could have the, the bolt cannons out and have your nine nine shots, but they are AP3, you see, um, with the heliothermic detonation. So they are definitely a huge upgrade from the um, normal Space Marine Legion Jet Bite Squadron. However, you, you pay the points for, for them. But with their power lances, they're definitely um, much more specific at hard, hard armor, larger foes and they can take a fair bit of damage too having them in a squadron of three though um, might make them vulnerable especially if an assault lasts more than one turn um, so either have three that have a specific role in the army uh, where they'll go in tank hunt or wipe out heavily armored foe or have six and have them all equipped with um, varying different weapons now i must say it is possible to magnetize all of these three weapons. You know, you can magnetize them. Um, th there is space in there to do so. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, equip them depending on the task at hand. So in summary, I think these are absolutely incredible models. Um, I think they're quite pricey and they're quite pricey in game as well. But if you get three for ninety pounds, uh, then you've got you know your your jet bike squadron that you can use with your the talons of the emperor force but as always i'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects